I'm back, but it has, <laughs> well, well, it, it's it's been a long year to say the least. I've been away thanks to the government shutdown, which did end, but unfortunately my workplace decided I wasn't entitled to any back pay for that time. And while that's obviously kept me pretty busy, the desire to rant demands that I make another video. So let's get right into it. On our last episode of Questionably Professional Frog in a Sweater, we covered some of the strangest things AI had to offer this year, or at least we would have covered those things if, you know, they weren't so unhinged and, and, you know, this is YouTube. But, you know, working on the worst of the worst in AI did remind me that I've got this awful habit of claiming to be an advocate for the technology while almost always speaking about the negative impacts in the field. So just for today, let's do a review of the best uses of AI in 2025. These are the things that impacted real human lives and contributed to the good of humanity. They're the kind of things we culturally often want AI to be doing, that is, making our lives better without displacing a human in the process. Up first at the number 10 spot, we've got instant network schools, using AI to make learning more accessible for students and manageable for the teachers. INS works in some rough environments. They're trying to set up schools for refugees, all while overcoming one of the biggest problems in these sorts of places, and that is the language barrier. When people gathering may speak any variety of nearly half a dozen languages with many unique dialects, learning can become difficult. INS leverages AI to provide translation services, management tools, and lesson plans. The overall impact for over a quarter million students learning under INS looks to be incredibly positive. The only reason this is on the bottom of the list is because expansion into countries with what's known as a mother tongue education law may prove to be a challenge, but it seems to be one that hasn't stopped them from making a positive impact in surrounding areas all the same. At number nine, we've got farm management AI and, and fishery too, because you know, this is a super sexy <laughs> list. Uh, both SmartCatch and Farmer.Chat had similar goals, make these practices more accessible through education. Their biggest presence is in Africa and Asia, and right now they actively assist individuals in crop management, resiliency, reducing fuel consumption, and streamlining the inventory reports during a harvest. It's not some small impact either. 460,000 farmers actively use farm.chat and 120,000 small scale fisheries are using SmartCatch on a regular basis. And all of that comes with the hope of reaching out to another 5 million individuals worldwide. Are you feeling warm and fuzzy yet? Well, I mean, if you're not, hopefully this number eight story should help out a little bit. Disaster relief assistance isn't something I thought of as an AI ready job, but as it turns out, it can have a big impact when it matters most, in theory. Unfortunately, not everything on this list is about what's actively being done. Sometimes positive stories in this case are just about bringing to light what is possible with the technology. And disaster relief is a perfect example, using computer vision, drones, and satellite images, as well as maps to quickly pinpoint the most impacted zones, we've seen papers come to light this year proving that we have the ability to send relief to those who need it most. I mean, getting as specific as the street or a single home address, this concept is something I'm really hoping to see actualized in 2026. Now, our number seven spot asks, what if disaster relief was never even needed? Google's flood forecasting is the answer to that question, and the one group I didn't expect to see on here. There's a mix of two models at work here, one to predict weather and river flows, and another to determine how that water would spread across floodplains. We've actually seen similar workflows adapted to predict fires, detect earthquakes, and they've both come with some pretty good success rates. Google is making a big positive impact here. Their flood forecasting project has been in the works since 2018, but hit some great expansions this year, which included statistics like reducing deaths by 43% for the 80 countries and 500 million individuals that they cover. It's even reduced economic losses by 35 to 50% depending on the area. So I guess, just for this one thing, hats off to you, Google, but please 
Uh, seriously, please don't stop doing this. Getting back on track at number six, we're looking at, uh, well, uh, everything, thanks to Microsoft Be My Eyes and Meta's AI glasses, and maybe even some alternatives on the market outside of the big tech world. I've never hidden from y'all that I'm blind as a bat. In fact, to give you an idea, here's what my vision looks like without glasses. And even with them on, I don't have anywhere close to 2020 vision. Getting AI to a point where voice commands can be flexible, the readback isn't robotic, and the CV is more accurate than my own vision, that, that is the hope right there. I do acknowledge that there is a big hurdle in sustainability, just like earlier entries. Like, what if one of the providers goes out of business and your AI-powered eyeballs just no longer work? Luckily, we do have an answer to that, and it's FOSS. The more commonplace the technology is, the quicker we'll be making that path collectively towards free and open source, until that technology isn't a $500 exclusive, but maybe more like a 3D print file with some reasonable costs attached. So AI isn't just saving lives, it's making things more accessible for people while they continue to live those long lives, and even assisting us during our golden years thanks to some help from our number five entry, LEQ. This tablet-based companion sits on a counter with a camera and works as you'd expect any always-on, in-home, corporate-sponsored dystopian tech to, but just a little less concerning this go-around. You talk to it, it talks back. It reminds you to take your medication, plays music, reads books, and I think this one is neat. It'll even take you on some virtual tours and trips. I loved hearing about the results of this one because medication adherence was up, reports of loneliness had dropped, all of which translates to a higher quality of life, something that I hope this year-long pilot will be expanding on. It's wild to see AI assisting us from the schoolyard to nursing homes and a lot of the stages in between, but I'm sure as you guessed from this sneaky transition that AI can help us out before we're ever born. For our number four entry, we've got Care NX Innovations, and they're using AI for fetal monitoring. The idea is that even when you're far away from a hospital, like in a rural setting, you can still be medically monitored for signs that a hospital trip might be needed right away. This early intervention technology leveraging AI monitoring isn't enough to save lives on its own, but it is enough to get you to the people you need in time to get the proper help. I view it as kind of an extension of these SIDS prevention mats and heartbeat monitor clips that are designed to reduce infant mortality by letting those who can't can't speak, have a louder voice. Care NX monitored half a million pregnancies and saw a reduction of NICU admissions by 30%. We're getting close to the end, which means it's time to go back to the beginning and talk about how AI is impacting things that have been a potential of the human condition for thousands and thousands of years. Well, uh, tuberculosis specifically. This nasty little sum can be treated, but without treatment, you only have like a 30% survival rate. As a result, identification can often be the line between life and death here. Ethiopia has taken the largest step with this, implementing 225 x-ray machines with AI-assisted TB detection across multiple hospitals, all with the goal of reducing the climbing rates of tuberculosis within the country. This technology isn't always about being better than a human at detection, but about being able to process data in mass that can lead to human fatigue and failures. Without that hurdle, AI can be leveraged to double-check human work, relieve overstrained individuals, and ensure that proper treatment isn't a gamble, but a guarantee. And hey, look friends, I am flying pretty high right now with that last one, but even I have to recognize that the technology isn't heavily in use yet, it just has the green light and the groundwork. That is not the case for our number, number, no, what number are we on? Number two? Number two entry on the list, there we go. LifePoint is decreasing unwanted hospital mortality rates from sepsis, all using AI-driven data. That's a mouthful, but let's get right into it. Believe it or not, healthcare is not supposed to be like the local Waffle House where you know the hash browns are gonna be best if Alice is cooking them. Healthcare is supposed to be consistent, you know, until new supported data changes the norm. The problem is, that's not how hospitals tend to operate, and what LifePoint found out in that variation of practice is that it's quite literally a killer. 
Their system aims to reduce variation in clinical practices, ensuring that everyone is on the same page. This is combined with AI to monitor data within the hospital in real time, and the result is consistency that becomes a win-win. We saw 600 lives saved due to decreased sepsis-based mortality. Patients spent overall 22,000 more days at home because the length of their stay was decreased, and fewer blood transfusions were needed. Every system right now has some kind of drawback, and realistically we do need more data to contribute to this study. Even though it's far from any sort of utopia, this does feel like a step in the right direction. Alrighty, now it's time to talk about the best thing to come out of AI this year. Am I biased? Yes, of course. Do I encourage you to disagree with me? No. Of course, I encourage you to disagree with me, and I'd love to hear about what happened in AI this year that impacted you the most in a positive way. Number one on our list belongs to a group led by researchers at the Perlman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania for saving one life, just one. The data and story, they, they're new to us, but they've been quietly humming along in the background for a few years now. The patient in question was set to enter hospice care, suffering from what's known as Castleman's disease, which causes a swelling of the lymph nodes that leads to severe infections and even organ failure. The group leveraged AI to run over 4,000 simulations and predictions, using existing medications to try and find anything with an off-label use that might help. And they did. As of publication of the data this year, the patient is two years into remission. This kind of AI that does drug repurposing like this, in my mind, it has the most potential. Not just for one person with Castleman's, but for anybody suffering from a chronic condition. This story hit me the hardest, and it's not one that I can really get out of my brain. I wish I could say that it wasn't for selfish reasons, but it is. Some of you might remember that I'm building a small local app called Memoria, which is intended to be a tool for processing grief without privacy risks and some basic safety net catches for, uh, well, you know, all of the bad things that, that can come from treating AI like a therapy tool. That idea, it didn't come out of nowhere and under any other circumstances wouldn't be something that I would be making. But one of my best friends asked me to make it. It's been four years since her daughter passed away at the age of 19, all thanks to a rare disease with no treatment. I see stories like this, and I see hope for how much pain could be prevented, the young lives that could be saved, and how parents could avoid the ultimate tragedy of burying their children. I know that got dark really quick, but let's go back to the silver lining. AI hasn't just helped lives, we're using it to save them, to comfort, and to adapt. The potential there is only half realized, and as the technology progresses, I'm exceptionally hopeful that we'll see more good coming out of processes like this and the transhumanism movement. Even if they don't make for the most exciting news stories to hit your feed, these are the ones that make the most impact on people's lives. At the end of the day, or, you know, year I guess in this case, AI is putting out some positive things. Just like the strangest things coming out of AI though, it's not the technology itself. It's the people behind these systems pursuing a goal. The only thing that separates these stories from the weirder ones is the developer's intention. And to be honest, I thought that it'd mean more stories about bad actors, especially with the way the news cycle loves to glorify the worst humanity has to offer. But instead, I found myself digging to find the worst of the worst, while the highlights of AI on humanitarian issues was only difficult for me because there were so many stories to pick from. It's a small anecdotal thing, but it does give me hope when looking to the future in spite of all the rhetoric out there. And on that note, I think that's going to be it from me today, folks. If you stayed here this long, here's an extra special thanks from me to you. This place, my continued pursuit of AI, and every dinky little project that I put together, they exist because of viewers like you. So from my household to yours, I hope your Christmas or anything else you celebrate is everything you deserve this year. Until next time, see ya nerds.